executives and members of the committee. Thank you for inviting me here today to speak with you about the Federal Aviation Administration's approach to safety oversight and to provide you with an update concerning the Boeing 737 MAX. With me today is Mr. Earl Lawrence, the Executive Director of the FAA's Aircraft Certification Service since December of 2018. When we fly anywhere in the world, we enjoy a certainty of safety that's unrivaled in the modern transportation era. That's because the FAA and the world's aviation regulators understand that the success of the global aviation system rests squarely on our shared commitment to safety and our common understanding of what it takes to achieve it. Together, we built a safety record that's the envy of other transportation modes, the healthcare field, and others. But we are humbled when our best efforts fail. On behalf of the United States Department of Transportation and the FAA, I would like to once again extend our deepest sympathy and condolences to the families of the victims of the Ethiopian Airlines and Lion Air accidents, and thank you for being here today. Deputy Administrator Dan Elwell and I have met with the family members and friends of those on board. We've seen their pain, their loss, and it reaffirms the seriousness with which we must approach safety every single day. That's why we're working tirelessly to ensure that the lessons learned from these terrible losses will result in a higher margin of safety for the aviation industry globally. For the 737 MAX return to service, the FAA fully controls the approvals process and is not delegating anything to Boeing. We will retain authority to issue airworthiness certificates and export certificates of airworthiness for all new 737 MAX airplanes manufactured since the grounding. When the 737 MAX is returned to service, it will be because the safety issues have been addressed and pilots have received all the training they need to safely operate the aircraft. This process is not guided by a calendar or schedule. Actions that must still take place include a certification flight test and completion of work by the Joint Operations Evaluation Board, which will include pilot training needs. Additionally, the FAA and the Technical Advisory Board, or TAB, will review the final design documentation. Finally, I'm not going to sign off on this airplane until I fly it myself. Today's unprecedented U.S. safety record was built on the willingness of aviation professionals to embrace hard lessons and to proactively seek continuous improvement. In addition to this committee's investigation and other congressional efforts, we welcome the scrutiny and recommendations from several independent reviews. Included in these are a Joint Authorities Technical Review, or JADR, that the FAA launched to conduct a comprehensive assessment of the MAX Automated Flight Control System Certification. The TAB we initiated to conduct an independent review of the proposed integrated system, training, and continued operational safety determination for the aircraft. And as an aside, I'd like to recognize and thank Mr. Matt Kiefer, uh, to my left here, also testifying here this morning for his work as a member of this board. Recommendations from the NTSB and the Indian, uh, Indonesian Accident Report on Lion Air Flight 610, the DOT's Inspector General Audit of the 737 MAX certification, and finally, a report from the Secretary's Special Committee on Aircraft Certification. We believe that transparency, open and honest communication, and our willingness to improve our systems and processes are the keys to restoring public trust in the FAA and the safety of the 737 MAX. Now, beyond the 737 MAX, the FAA is committed to addressing issues regarding aircraft certification processes, not only in the United States, but around the world. These issues include moving toward a more holistic versus transactional item-by-item -item approach to aircraft certification, integrating human factors considerations more effectively throughout the design process, and ensuring coordinated and flexible information flow during the FAA's oversight process. We and our international partners must also foster improvements in how aircraft are designed and produced, but also in how they are maintained and operated. We at the FAA are prepared to take the lead in this new phase of system safety. Aviation's hard lessons and the hard work in response to those lessons 
have paved the way to creating a global aviation system with an enviable safety record. But we recognize that safety is a journey, not a destination, and we must build on the lessons learned and we must never allow ourselves to become complacent. Thank you, and this concludes uh, my, my statement, and I'm happy to take your questions. Uh, thank you.